The other week, I posted my long-term review of the new MacBook Pro and asked you guys if you'd like to see more gaming on it. You asked, I delivered. I'm Jason with Maslin Tech. let's play some games. Before we look at the games, one quick note on controllers. With a dongle, DualShock 4 and the Xbox One S controller have worked beautifully in my use, but they work just as well over Bluetooth and pairing is dead simple. I'm using my One S controller for these games and noticed no input lag or hiccups playing wirelessly. Best of all, no adapters needed. So let's get started with a game I'm terrible at, Overwatch. I put this in my last video, but let's look a little longer at the settings. Running at 1920 by 1200 I'm getting a solid 60 frames across the board. Controller support on PC works right out of the box, though I was no competition for mouse and keyboard players. Surprisingly, fans didn't really kick in that hard while playing either. Overwatch is really well optimized, and I'm sure it could be totally playable on the lower end graphics cards as well. Next, I tried Trials Fusion, a game released back in 2014 for the current generation consoles. This is a game I couldn't really run on max settings on my 2013 MacBook Pro, so I was curious to see how it would work on here. Trials Fusion on PC is interesting because the pace of the game is tied to the frame rate. Play at 60 frames and the game runs perfectly. If your machine can only run at 30 frames, then the game will actually run at half speed, which is what I experienced on my old MacBook Pro with the 750M graphics card. Surprisingly, the game ran like butter on the Touch Bar Mac. Every map stayed at a solid 60 frames per second. To stretch it a little further, I downloaded some user-made maps, which typically run worse if the maps aren't carefully optimized. Once again, perfect performance, so I decided to dig into the settings a little. Turns out, I was only running the game at 1280 by 800 with everything set to high, so I bumped up the resolution to 1080p. Even more surprisingly, the game's built-in tracks still kept a solid 60 frames, and user-made tracks only dipped a little. I had hiccups here and there in the 40 frame range, but that was the worst I saw. Next up, Rocket League is the game on this list I'm most familiar with. To hit 60 FPS across the board, with no drops on Wasteland, Aquadome, or in Rumble Mode, I have the game set at 1680 by 1050 resolution, with everything on except motion blur and camera shake. When I turned up all the settings to max, with the resolution at 2880 by 1800 and anti-aliasing on high, the game ran in the low 30s on Aquadome, averaging 32 frames per second. Technically playable, but the extra fidelity isn't worth the dropped frames. Oddly enough, running at 1080p, the game averaged about 35 frames, which is odd since 1050p runs at a locked 60. I'm personally not too big into AAA shooters or sports games, but I played a decent number of indie games. My two favorites last year were Salt and Sanctuary and Hyperlight Drifter. I was a Kickstarter backer of the latter game. Naturally, neither of these games are too demanding, but I felt they were both worth including for separate reasons. Salt and Sanctuary has the problem of being extremely dark in several areas. This makes it really hard to see on the MacBook Pro's screen. Some scenes on the screen were so black that I was seeing the reflection of my other monitor in a dark room. Hyper Light Drifter, on the other hand, looks amazing. I truly believe the best way to play this game is on a monitor with wide color support. The bright, neon color palette really shines on a display like this. I've played the game on a PS4 and my GTX 1070 rig, and this is by far the best I've seen the game look. Next, let's compare two games from two different console cycles. Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin Edition, runs like butter. It stayed at 60 frames per second, with only small drops in the upper 50s in busier scenes, all at 1080p high settings. This isn't really a demanding game, but I'm still glad to see it runs so well. Performance is on par with the PS4 version. Dark Souls 3, which was in my review video, was the most demanding game I ran on the Mac. Like I said in the last video, I've kept the game at 800p to get around 60 frames per second, but just for kicks, I played the same segment twice, once at 800p and once at 1080p. 1080p cuts the frame rate in half, making reposts impossible- nope, wait, still got it. Either way, it's less than ideal, but still possible. Lastly, that thumbnail wasn't clickbait, you saw that right. Can the new MacBook Pro play Super Mario 3D World? Should we even try? But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think they should. Welcome to Simu, a currently in development Wii U emulator. 
If you've ever used an emulator before, then you know typically the overhead of emulation means your hardware that's running the emulator usually needs to be several times faster than the hardware it's attempting to emulate. That's why I was so blown away by Simu's progress. Super Mario 3D World ran at a solid 60 frames on the Wii U, and while it can't maintain that on the 2016 MacBook Pro, it's absolutely playable. There are smaller graphical glitches with hiccups here and there, but overall, this is totally playable. Even better, there are options within the emulator to take the game beyond the original resolution to 1080p and even 4K, but once again, this Mac won't handle that. Either way, it was a fun experiment I didn't really expect to work. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I was really impressed with the performance on my end, and with a few settings turned down, I believe this laptop will handle most games within this console generation you throw at it. In some cases, like Overwatch, it can outpace the console versions. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Jason with Maslin Tech. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.